morning. So today we're looking at a topic, man and Satan. Man and Satan. Amen. Amen. We looked at God last week and the week before. Hallelujah. Amen. And we said that God is the creator of all things. And then God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is holy. God is a spirit. God is a person you can know. And God is a loving father. Amen. Amen. So we'll move on to look at the topic man and Satan. Amen. Amen. Now, what is the will of God regarding man here on earth? Why did God create man? <laughs> this is what we're going to look at. And why Satan here on earth? Why do we have Satan here on earth? So we're looking at man and Satan. But before we look at man, I want us to look at angels. Because Satan is a fallen angel. Amen. He used to be called Lucifer when he was an angel of the Lord. But when he fell, and the Lord threw him down from heaven into this atmosphere. His name changed from Lucifer to Satan, or what we call the devil. And the angels that accompanied him, who came down with him, are also called evil spirits. Amen. Amen. Now, the Bible makes us aware that angels were created before man or before men if you like angels were created before us now let's read job chapter 38 and i'm going to read from verse 1 to 7 and it's the verse 7 that tells us um about angels then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Verse 4. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you understand who marked off his dimensions. Surely you know who stretched the measuring line across it. And on what were its footing set or laid its cornerstone? Verse 7. While the morning stars sank together and all the angels shouted for joy. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible tells us that before God created the earth and put man on, verse 7 says, the angels saw it and they shouted for joy. So angels were created before men or created before man. They saw God creating the earth and obviously, they saw God creating man and putting man on the earth. So angels were created before us. And the Bible says that they saw, the angels saw, and they shouted for joy. Hallelujah. Amen. It means that, you know, they were all happy that God was creating a dimension, a different dimension, a dimension different from the spirit dimension, which we called the physical world, 
in which he placed physical man. So they were all rejoicing. And if the angels rejoiced, and Satan is a fallen angel, then what he tells us is that Satan was among the angels that rejoiced and shouted for joy when they saw God creating the earth and creating man. So Lucifer was happy. Hallelujah. But now, as we talk, he is our number one arch enemy. Okay? As we speak now, Lucifer is the number one arch enemy of man. But he rejoiced when he saw the foundations of the earth being laid. He rejoiced when he saw man being created. Hallelujah. So we'll come to see how he's become our enemy. Amen. Amen. And what we need to do to overcome Lucifer, who is now called Satan or the devil. Now let's look at man and why God created man. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 27 is our quotation for the basis on which we know God's reason for creating man. So can I ask you something? Um, I was watching one Christian program and then they were debating the fact that if Jesus Christ was there before creation or he wasn't there before creation, and then some people were arguing that he was alone who created the earth, Jesus Christ was the part of creation. And then some people were saying he was part of creation and he was there from the beginning. So when you talk about this chapter, it is what you focus on earlier about because it says, Let us make man in his own image. So let us, that means he was with somebody. Mm -hmm. and he did it with somebody else. Amen. So that's the first answer to that question. Um, but we'll also we'll look at Jesus in our next topic when we finish with this topic. We'll be looking at Jesus and who Jesus is. So we'll be answering that question when we look at Jesus and who he is. Amen. Amen. So we first want to look at man. And after we have understood man and we have understood who Satan is, then we'll move on to Jesus and the work that he did to redeem us from the clutches of Satan. Amen. Amen. Now, God created man in order to have a relationship <coughs> with man. Now, the Bible tells us that God used to visit Adam and Eve. You come into the garden where he placed them and you have a chat with them. And on one of these occasions when he came, that was when he found out that they are eating of the fruit that he had told them not what to eat from. But let's look, let's go back and look at God's um, purpose for man here on earth. So Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Hallelujah. Amen. So God created the earth, which as we've spoken before from Job chapter 38, the Bible says, whilst God, created, whilst God was creating the earth and laying the foundations, the angels saw it and they rejoiced or they shouted for joy. Hallelujah. 
Now this verse tells us that the realm of the earth belongs to man. God created man to inhabit the earth. God created man and committed the earth into the hands of man. And the command was that they are created in the image and likeness of God and they are to rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over livestock, and over all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So this earth was created for us. And the spirit realm was created for angels. Okay? To be with God in the spirit and worship him. So, in fact, angels have no business here on earth unless they have been assigned by God to do a specific job here on earth. Or else, their realm is to be in the spirit and worship God in heaven. Any angel that you see here on earth it's here on the on an assignment. It's God that has sent that angel to be on assignment. And when they finish the assignment, they go back. So the earth belongs to man. Man is supposed to rule the earth, rule the fish in the sea, rule over all the creatures. Rule over everything here on earth. Dominion was given to man. So how come we now have other spirits ruling over us? How did the devil get that power or dominion which was given to man to rule over the earth? Amen. Amen. Now, he did this through deception. And how did he do that? Let's read Genesis chapter 2. And the verse 15 to 17. Now, the Bible says that the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. So God created the garden, called the Garden of Eden, and placed man in the garden. Already he has given him the commandment, this earth belongs to you, you are to rule over it. But there's a commandment that he gave man. I have placed a tree in this garden called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And this is what I want you to do. You can eat of any fruit in the garden, but don't touch this one. Now man was given that warning, man was given that commandment in order to keep the earth intact and prevent the demonic spirits that were hovering around at that time to have access and dominion over this earth. So, so long as Man was obedient to God. Man was the one reigning and ruling over this earth. Now, as we all know the story, the Bible tells us that Eve was tempted. She ate of the fruit and gave it to her husband. And he also ate of the fruit. And when they did that, the Bible says that their eyes were opened 
and they saw that they were naked. By that act of disobedience, power was transferred from man to Satan. By that act of disobedience, the devil came to rule and to sit in that chair where he took over the power and authority from man. Now when man fell and the devil took over, what happened? What results did we get? What results did we get by being disobedient to God and losing our power and authority to the devil? We go to the, uh, the book of Romans, which tells us the results of our disobedience. Now, the first result that we got, or the first fruit that we got by disobeying God is idolatry. Idolatry. When man disobeyed God, the first results we got from disobeying God is that idolatry entered into this earth. And we find that from Romans chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. Romans chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. Now this is what the Apostle Paul says. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God, nor gave their thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Hallelujah. Even though they knew God, they neither glorified him as God or neither gave him thanks. And by that, idolatry was introduced into the lives of men. Now, what is idolatry? Now, Paul says that instead of them giving glory to God, they carved images in the form of men, images in the form of uh, other reptiles and animals, and they bow down to those um, images and said, these are our gods. Now, the animals, the reptiles, the images that man was supposed to rule over, now these were the very things that because we had fallen, and in our fallen nature, we bow down to these things. Now, in our days, what will you refer to as an idolatry? Now, the, the verse begins by telling us that even though the people knew God, they did not give glory to God. Now, anytime you take God out of your life and you replace something and you make that thing a central part of your life, that thing becomes your idol. Anything that you give glory to, instead of giving glory to God, becomes your idol. Now, you don't have to necessarily carve an image in the form of a reptile, in the form of a man, in the form of a bird, to bow before it. Anything that you give glory to in your life becomes your idol. And that's what the Bible says. That they knew God, but they did not give glory to him. And because of that, God gave them up over to their depraved mind. And instead of that, instead of them worshipping God, they stood so low and worshipped other beings and creatures. What do you give glory to? Is a question that you need to answer. What you so cherish in your life that that thing has replaced God in your life. 
Now, people are fond of saying, it's by my strength that I achieved this. It's by my own knowledge and intellect that I was able to do this. I don't need God to do this. I don't need God to do that or so, so on and so forth. Where was God when I was working hard to achieve the success that I have today? In other words, those people are giving glory to their abilities and intellect and the strength that they have. They are not giving glory to God. We did it by our own strength. God did not do it for us. Yeah, I studied. I studied it myself. If I hadn't studied, I would have failed my exams. I'm not giving credit to God for God. I'm telling God that God is the one that made me pass my exams. No, I studied to pass my exams. Where was God when I was burning the midnight candle and studying and getting my grades? It's my studies, it's my intelligence that got me the grade. And they take God out. If I hadn't studied, I would have failed. So it's not God that made me pass. I studied and passed. Yes, it's true. I'm not saying that don't put in the hard work into your studies. You study. You work hard. If you don't study, if you don't work hard, you fail. But the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, that remember the Lord your God, because it is he that gives you the strength to make wealth. And therefore, the strength that you are bragging about, that you work hard to achieve what you have achieved, was given to you by God. Amen. It is true that if you don't work hard, you don't succeed. But you must recognize the one that gave you the strength to do the hard work that you're talking about. And therefore, don't give glory to your abilities. Don't give glory to the hard work you're doing. Give glory to the one that gave you the strength and the ability and the intelligence to do what you are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people think it's because of their beauty. No, no one got this connection for me. It's because I'm beautiful. That is why I got this connection. So it's my beauty that got it for me. It's the worship of self. They worship themselves. And that is the first resource we, we got by disobeying God. Now man became self-centered instead of becoming God-centered. Idol worship replaced the worship of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let me ask you today, maybe you are in church, but let me ask you this question. Who are you worshiping? Who are you worshipping? Are you worshipping your talents? Are you worshipping your abilities? Are you worshipping your beauty? Are you worshipping your money? Are you worshipping your business or your work? Or is my work that got me to this place? Is my money that got me this? Is my beauty that got me this? Is my intelligence that got me this? Is so so and so that got me this? Are you giving glory to God? Or you are giving glory to your money? Are you giving glory to God? Or you are giving glory to your connections? Are you giving glory to God? Or you are giving glory to your beauty? Now, anything that you don't, um, anything that you're giving glory to instead of God becomes your God. Your job becomes your God. Your money becomes your God. Your intelligence becomes your God. So the question again, who do you worship? Who do you give glory to? In other words, who is the center of your life? 
The thing which is central to you in your life is what you worship. If Jesus is the center, if God is the center, then you are worshiping God. If any other thing has taken place, has taken the place of God in your life, then that thing is your God. And if you don't have Jesus as the one who is the center of your life, then do everything and place him back. Are you ready to let it go? Are you ready to sacrifice it? Are you ready to allow Jesus to be the center of your life? Or you want to live your own life, your own way? I will say it and I'll say it again. Coming to church does not make you a Christian. Being in church every Sunday, every week, every Wednesday, every prayer meeting does not make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is that God takes preeminence in your life. He takes the central place in your life. What makes you a Christian is that Jesus is Lord over your life. He is the master over your life. And everything that you do, you do to please the Lord of your life. Do you understand? You don't do it to please your parents. You don't do it to please your pastor. You don't do it to please your colleagues. You don't do it to please anyone, but you are doing it to please the Lord which means master of your life. If he is the master of your life, the question is, is he ruling over your life? Because anything that you call master means that that thing has power over you and it rules your life. And whatever you're doing, you do it to please the Lord, you don't do it to please man. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I'm coming to church because my friend is in church. You've lost the point. You don't come to church because of your friend. Oh, I'm coming to church because my parents are in the church. It's wrong. You're not doing it to please your parents. You are doing it to please the Lord that you serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, your coming to church should not be for no other reason but to please the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? And therefore, if you tie it to personalities, if you tie it to personal, oh, I come to church because my parents come, or oh, I come to church because um, <laughs> my friends come, or oh, I come to church because this person comes. If you tie it to personalities, if that person hurts you, are you going to leave the worship of God? Are you going to leave church because that person hurt you? Our faith should not be built on men. Our faith should be built on God. Jesus should be the center. And that is the only way by which you grow in your faith. Your faith must be based on the Lord Jesus. The second thing that entered the world when man disobeyed God <laughs> is immorality. And that is from Romans chapter 1 
verses 24 to 27. Immorality. <coughs> Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Hallelujah. Amen. Now Paul says that as a result of the disobedience of man to God, immorality entered the world. And men started doing degrading things. Distasteful things. Things that normal human beings will not even think of. Now in this verse, Paul talks about women having sex with animals. Bestiality. And in this verse, God talks about men having sex with men. With these days, we have glorified it and given it a name, gay. Previously, to be gay meant that you were a happy person. Someone who is happy was someone who was referred to as what? As gay. Now, gay connotes different things. Men sleeping with men. Now the Lord wants to tell us that disobedience to him does not make you rise up, but disobedience to, you, to him makes you sink and go lower. Amen. You become more disgraced and you act inhumanly instead of acting like a human. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Disobedience brings in immorality. So anytime you disobey God as a Christian, sin enters. And the more you disobey, the more you sin. The more you disobey, the more you backslide. The more you disobey, the more unholy you become. So the things that you used not to do will begin to creep back into your life. Hallelujah. It will creep back into your life. And then you go down and down and down and down into sin. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the third thing that happened when man sinned is that all kinds of wickedness also entered the world. All kinds of wickedness. And that is taken from Romans chapter 1 verses 28 to 32. Romans 1, 28 to 32. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to the brave mind to do what they ought not to, to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey 
their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. They approve of those who do such wicked things. Deceit, strife, murder, envy, jealousy, wickedness increased in this world. And that is what we got as humans by disobeying God. Amen? Amen. But there is a good news. There is a plan of restoration. Initially, God gave us the power to rule over the earth, to rule over the fish, to rule over all creatures of the earth. And we've learned that the devil deceived man and took that dominion from man by tempting man and making him disobey God. And when we disobeyed God, three things happened. Idolatry crept into the world, immorality crept into the world, and all manner of wickedness that we can think of crept into the world. But there is a plan of restoration. There is a plan of deliverance. God quickly came up with a plan to deliver us. Now the Bible says that for us in Adam all died. So also in Christ all will be made alive. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. Now the Bible says that sin entered into the world through Adam. But life has come to all men through Jesus Christ. And that is the restorative plan of God. Now those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, those that express faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, those that make Jesus the center of their lives, are the people that are able to get their dominion and their power back and walk as kings and queens and rulers over this earth. Hallelujah. The only way by which you can get your power back, by which you can get your dominion back, which was the original plan of God for man, is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's to make the Lord Jesus Christ the center of your life. Because the Bible says that through him, life came into this world. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you want to receive that life? Do you want to receive that power? Do you want to receive that original authority and dominion that God gave you. If you want that power, make Jesus the center of your life. If you want back that power, give glory to God rather than giving glory to yourself, to your strength, to your intelligence, and to your beauty. May the Lord bless us all and may the Lord cause us to walk in his presence and make Jesus the center of our lives so that we can walk in the dominion, the power, and the authority that God purposed and planned for us right from the beginning. God bless you for listening. Amen. Amen. Amen.